Good evening guys, it is Thursday, January 7th, 2016, and this is the first step in a new direction. I started out making videos on YouTube talking about the news, and I haven't done a whole lot of that on this channel in a long time, so I thought it was about time. Now for the last several years I've been going to CES, and unfortunately, and fortunately at the same time, I had to miss CES this year because, as I said in a previous video, we have a new baby in the house. But in missing CES, it inspired me to learn more about what was going on there, and I thought I would just take a little bit of time to sort of recap some of the really cool things that I found from there in what I'm now going to call that's what I like, because I found some things there that I liked. And this first one's gonna be really informal. This is something that I was thinking about doing on a weekly basis, just talking about some of the tech-related news, not necessarily tech, anything in particular, just things that I find interesting, that I find in the news in a week to week basis. But like I said, this very first episode, unscripted, very off the cuff, I'm gonna be reading a little bit from my tablet, just going through stories and news articles as I find them. So let's get started. One of the true hot button issues at CES this year is VR. That's gonna be one of the big things you hear a ton about this year. So first up, from an article over on Droid Life, HTC has unveiled their Vive version two. It's a new developer edition model and they're gonna be seeding 7,000 of them to developers. They say they've redesigned it from the ground up, bringing in a front-facing camera and room scaling technology, but what's better than that is they say that they're going to have a consumer-ready version of it on April 1st, so I'm absolutely stoked for that one. In other VR news, obviously, the Oculus Rift went up for pre-order at $600. That blew a lot of people out of the water because I think a lot of people expected it to be in the $300 price range or even less, but the pre-order is available now and it's supposed to start shipping in March, which of course beats HTC by just a little bit. But don't get in too big of a hurry to order one if you have not already done the pre-order. If you back them on Kickstarter for their original Oculus developer kit for the first one, the $275 whatever it was back in 2012. Oculus is committing to give out brand new consumer ready versions of them to all of the people that did that. And I think I read here it was like 7,500 people that they're gonna get one absolutely free. So they're gonna be sending out surveys to the people that back them and it'll be a special free Kickstarter edition for those people that back. This apparently does not apply to the people that backed for the developer kit too, so sorry about that. But still, very nice to see that there's gonna be about 7,500 people that get a free one. They also published the recommended PC specs if you want to be able to run the Oculus. They say it's gonna take an Nvidia GTX 970 or an AMD R9 290 equivalent or greater. I don't think I have that. An Intel i5 4590 or higher, do have that. Uh, eight gigs of RAM or higher, definitely got it. An HDMI 1.3 video output, yeah. Three USB 3 ports and one USB 2 port. That's a lot of ports. As well as Windows 7 SP1 64-bit or newer. Shouldn't be a problem for most people unless you're a Mac person. Doesn't say anything on here about Mac, that's a little interesting. But that does sort of beg the question, are you going to be picking up the new Oculus when it does become available? Or have you already done the pre-order? I haven't really said anything about it yet, but I've been in contact with Altspace VR after making the video about Altspace just a couple of months ago. They reached out to me and actually, they offered to send me an Oculus developer kit too, so I'm gonna be making some videos about this over the next couple of months, or until they ask for it back. So be on the lookout for more content about this. Moving on though, the other big hot button issue is 4K cameras, at least in my opinion, because I'm using a 4K camera, even though I'm not filming a 4K at the moment. Kodak came out with a 4K action cam that can shoot 360 video, sort of. You have to pair two of them together, back to back, to do full VR-ready 360 spherical video. The camera itself is $4.99, and for a pair of them, they've got a whole kit set up where you can get the two of them with all the software you need to stitch everything together to have that full spherical video for $8.99. Still cheaper than some other options and potentially much higher quality. I, I'm curious to see what the video out of it looks like. Kodak generally makes some halfway decent cameras. I mean, they've been in the business for long enough they ought to be able to. And with all of the new VR stuff, this as a way of creating VR content might be interesting. Moving on to another thing that I'm very passionate about, drones. Unique unveiled a new drone, the Typhoon H, and they're poising it to sort of be a competitor to the DJI Inspire 1. Coming in starting at $17.99, but the one thing that really makes it stand out and makes it unique, as it were, is it has six rotors, so it's not a quadcopter, it's a hexacopter, but it has the ability to sense and avoid obstacles. Now $17.99, that's a little bit out of my price range in terms of buying a drone at the moment, but I do look forward to seeing more out of this and seeing what the video quality looks like, seeing how stable it can be. I've seen amazing things out of the unique quadcopter so far, so I can only imagine this is going to be even better, and the ability to avoid obstacles is a must going forward. And speaking of drones, a Chinese company called Ehang unveiled a drone at CES. 
that can carry passengers. It's capable of holding one person and they're looking to sell it for 200 to 300 thousand dollars sometime later this year and it looks like once all of the things are folded in after it's landed it actually is supposed to be able to fit into a parking space so technically if you can get to your work in 20 minutes you could fly to work land it park in the parking space hopefully charge it up while you're there i haven't seen the things about how you actually charge it at the moment but it has four sets of paired motors so it's not actually a quadcopter it's an octocopter so you have four rotors on top four rotors on the bottom all spaced out and it says average speed is 100 kilometers per hour the design highest distance is 500 meters hover time of 23 minutes charging time is two to four hours so technically i guess if you work within 20 something minutes of your home you could fly there as long as you can get the fly that'd be interesting plug it in when you get there and then be ready to go whenever you're ready to go home i don't think this is the best way to go but i think this could be a good step in the right direction this is maybe our way toward flying cars if you combine this what they're working on with some of the stuff that tesla's doing with their new gigafactory and the batteries that they're about to start turning out you could technically have some really interesting flying car future technology coming speaking of future technology though intel and xiaomi apparently paired up to create a segway based robot Ninebot is what they're calling it. And it's kind of like a little robot butler. It's like the little hoverboard. I made a video about a while back on that, but it's got a little stick that sticks up from it. I think this is actually Segway's model that has a pole that sticks up and helps you with balancing. But then they put like a head and arms and everything on it and it can move. There's a video about this. I think it's on CNET. The, the article I'm gonna link to is on Engadget though. You can probably find the video from there. Go check that out. This thing is, it's adorable and it looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. There was an article on The Verge about the Chevy Bolt and how they got a chance to test drive it. The Chevy Bolt is GM's new option, new electric car as an alternative to Tesla. Now the funny thing is this car they're saying is gonna come in at under $40,000 but the Tesla Model 3, when it does become available, is gonna be in the 30 to $35,000 range. So this is gonna be really interesting. The, the Chevy Bolt is supposed to have a 200 mile range. As far as I understand, the Tesla Model 3 should as well. Tesla has a pretty decent history in the electric car scheme of things. Chevy doesn't quite yet. They, they tried with the Volt and they haven't had great success with it, but it did work. And supposedly the Bolt is a nice successor to that. The one thing that I read from the article, the one thing I gleaned from it is that it's actually not impressive in a good way. It feels like a traditional car, but it's electric. So you get all of the benefits of being an electric car without actually standing out of the pack. So maybe your car won't get stolen. Moving on, there were a couple of stories that popped up about interesting display technologies, things that will probably never ever show up in production model stuff. Uh, Panasonic made a transparent display. LG made a roll-up OLED TV. I don't know if these will actually ever show up in consumer level technology, but it's cool to see these things. It's cool that they are possibilities. Hopefully things like this will become available eventually, but I don't see it as being a thing yet. Razer is also putting out a new web camera called Stargazer that's built for streaming. From what I read about this, I think this is actually using Intel's technology. Intel came out with some stuff last year or the year before that could seamlessly remove backgrounds from your video. So basically, as a, a new up-and-coming Twitch streamer, you could sit yourself in a room, not have to use a green backdrop or anything, and remove the backdrop from you decently well. If it's gotten better than what Intel showed, it will be pretty amazing. And so they're gonna have this camera that offers 720p resolution, which, again, you're probably not gonna be streaming 1080p video from your webcam. Still, I, I like the idea of having a 1080p webcam in case you want to record local video. Take a look at that article if you're interested in a new webcam. I've still got the Logitech C920 and I'm loving it. Razer also unveiled a bunch of other stuff, a new Stealth Ultrabook, which has an external GPU enclosure which actually, not a bad idea, at least in my opinion. That way you've got all your GPU power there, you can upgrade it later, but when you're on the go and you don't necessarily need all of that gaming power, you unplug it, you take your laptop and you go do what you need to do. When you come back, you plug it back in and you game. You could take that little external enclosure with you in your bag or something, take it in your suitcase when you're traveling, plug it in when you get to the hotel. Sounds like a neat option. Asus is launching the Zenfone Zoom here in the US on February 1st for just 399 bucks. It's got optical zoom on the camera. That's really the one thing that makes it unique. It's only running Android Lollipop, has an Intel processor in it, kind of like the Zenfone 2. Four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage, big battery. It's it's basically the Zenfone 2, but with an optical zoom on it and 400 bucks. So uh, middle of the road there, as far as I'm concerned. I would definitely be interested in taking a look at it for the camera. And I think the last thing I'm gonna mention, they have put out a hoodie with a pillow in it. As a person who wears an awful lot of hoodies and as a person who owns an ostrich pillow, you know the ostrich pillow, which you put on your head when you're traveling 
and block out all of this. Yeah, this thing is right up my alley. And I left out a couple of the stories that I wanted to talk about, but this video has been going on for entirely too long. That's the problem with unscripted video. Future videos of this type will not be anywhere near this long, so please do not worry about that. They will be scripted, they will be more like the XDA videos, but just about general tech things and quadcopters and whatever else I find interesting. But that's what I like from CES. Let me know what you like down in the comment section below. Let me know if there's anything that I missed that you really think I should have been talking about here. Let me know if you like this video format or if you'd prefer it to be more like the XDA video style. Thank you so much for watching though. I appreciate it and I will see you again very soon. Bye guys.